should be it. Or Slanesh. That is, that's, oh, my, that's it. What's what he going to get here? Up okay. smash, thunder, 85, oh, he's off stage. That's and that's it. It. is your Smash Summit 8 champion. Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Marissa Roberto, and as always, I'm sitting here with the hype master, Drew Faze. Drew, I love doing FGC Wednesdays with you because you're so hype, baby, and I know this week will be no exception, so what are we talking about? Let's make some noise, baby! <laughs> we got Tiger Uppercut, the hypest Tekken World Tour event of the year with an unexpected winner, or I expect them, kind of. And we also got the Pikachu Master, a.k.a. the Detective, a.k.a. Ryan Reynolds, a.k.a. Axe, baby! We're gonna talk about, he's gonna join us today, we're gonna talk about his first major ever. I love that you kind of took ownership of it, like, I expected it, kind of. Because he did surprise. Yeah. He surprised a few people. Oh, he totally did. Even though he's won a few in the past, like it's still surprising to see someone shine so bright. Uh, I cannot wait to talk to the very wholesome acts as well. But before we give him a call, let's check out some of the best moments from Smash Summit 8. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Axe's big shot right here. Depending on stage. how good Axe's execution is, oh, he's just dead. He's just <laughs> dead. He's like wow. four for four Yeah, he got like that. three times on that stage. That's crazy. Wow. Oh, 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 oh wow. Kind of Caught him again. Here. Yeah. She did not have uppered that. Oh, he's, oh, he's jumping the aerials. He's jumping the aerials. He did that down around. That's so scary. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Axe just, that was a zero to death, I think. Yeah, Mango definitely jumped back with a lot of aerials. Oh, my God. He bumped his head on FOG. <laughs> okay. Unfortunate. Oh, that was so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> Got that up here again, but was this fine? Ooh, rapid jabs. Oh. Oh. The rapid jab side beat. Oh, he just comes out oh, with oh, back there. Got the grab. Oh, this is funny way for that one. I can get space in my axe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. up here. Got oh, it. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. 80%. Three up here. That Pikachu might be small, but yeah. Four throw. Four throw. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! That was so good off the four throw. Yeah. He knows. Oh, that might be it. Oh, oh. he got the grab. grab. He's gonna go. Nair. Okay, off stage. Yeah. Okay, goes for yeah. it. Got it. And Axe is in grand finals. Axe is in grand finals. Super well winner played. Winner side. Summon eight. Wow, Axe. Still gets the grab. Oh my oh, god, how did he... Oh, oh. big start, but... Okay, but right. he always got that DI for Okay, okay. wait. Stomping by the oh, corner. Oh, oh and he's, he's dead. Big. He's just dead. He's both of these guys oh. are just not dying. They both got anything. Oh. oh my god! Oh, he waited that so far! Don't do it! <laughs> that was a weak nair that got him oh. Oh. oh, what an up air! Just barely! Nice, but you can't believe that's popping. Oh, oh. 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 got angry at him. Oh. Oh. Damn, X? Up there? Wow. Oh, 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 what a sneaky up there! He's gonna get the grab! Here we go! This is what's he oh. gonna get here? Up okay. smash, oh. thunder, 85, oh, he's off stage! Axe, 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 Axe is, is your Smash Summit 8 champion! Axe did it! He's done it! A Pikachu has won a major Smash Summit 8! For the first time ever, a Pikachu has won a Melee Major, and we are absolutely honored to be joined by the Smash Summit 8 champion, Jeffrey Axe Williamson. Axe, man, how are you feeling now that some of the post-victory craziness has subsided? I feel, I mean, I feel good now. Like, when it first happened, things were, things have been pretty crazy for a little while after <laughs> it happened, but, you know, now that things are a little bit calmed down, I'm, I'm still freaking out a little bit, but I, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> Fair Probably. enough. Dude, Axe, you're the only person to ever win with a major with Pikachu. How crazy is that? Your character's mid-tier, dude! Your character shouldn't be winning like this! How difficult was this thing for so long, dude? Yeah, the thing is, like, when I first started playing Pikachu, he was, he was like, really far down on the tier list, right? But I always thought he was okay, so, you know, I just, I just did, did my thing. Yeah. Bro, you carried that I mean, character. Like, you, you did your thing. Character. He carried him, but he's, he does his thing. But yes, you also had to defend him a lot, too, right? Like, you must be getting it from some people just over the years telling you that maybe you should not be sticking with him, maybe try someone new. Why Why is he your boy? Why has he always been your boy? Well, Why will yeah. he continue to be your boy? You know, something about playing Pikachu just feels, like, correct for me. Something clicks when I play mm -hmm. the character. I mean, there's just something about him that when I move with him, he just feels good to to uh to play in the game and things like that so 
Uh, I just ignore everyone for the most part. You know, a lot of people have told me that I, I need to switch characters and stuff, but yeah. um, I just thought they were wrong, so I, I, I made it. <laughs> it took a while, but I'm here now. Ignore the haters, man. Uh, absolutely. Ignore Ab the shade. Absolutely. All those dirty puff me. Oh, jeez. Okay, <laughs> 2019 has been a crazy year for you. That's rude, Prue. Second at Genesis and at Gombo, and now first at Summit. So how have you been able to make such a wild ascension this year? You know, it comes down to practice and dedication. Mm. Uh, for me, playing melee is just really fun. I like mm. playing the game a lot. So, uh just after practicing so many things and just keeping your head in the game and practicing as much as you can, uh, I think regardless of the character you're using, as long as you learn how to fight someone else and beat them, uh, to, in my opinion, the character doesn't matter like too much in that regard. But yeah, it all comes down to just a lot of practice and dedication. I mean, you, you're kind of like the antithesis of every Twitter monster. You know, mm. you never complain, mm. you always grind hard, and you work it out, and you make up for your character's weaknesses. But mm. you know what? We got to talk about a crazy specific set from Summit, man. Mm. That grand final against Rizbow, that dude is hot right now. Mm. That dude reset the bracket against you, and then you won 3-1. Walk us through that match and how you were able to adapt after that crazy reset. Mm. Dude, Wizard's insane. What 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 has he been doing lately? Like I feel like he out of the blue, he's just like, oh, by the way, I'm like the best player in the world, just out of nowhere. <laughs> it makes no I don't know, it's just it's just crazy to think about. But uh, you know, he's he's had an insane level up lately somehow. Talking to him, he said that he hasn't even been like uh, he wasn't prepared for Smash and Splash, which he won, and now he he went got to grand finals at Summit, all that sort of stuff. Uh, he's, a, he's a really tough opponent. I mean, he's the epitome of, I'm going to test your patience and execution. If you are not perfect for a really long time, he's going to beat you. So it, it wasn't easy, but I was able to do it. <laughs> He was able to come through and be successful. Um, obviously, you were very emotional after your win. It was a long time coming for you. Uh, what was your immediate reaction to winning Summit? Because, I mean, it wasn't your ordinary pop-off. Yeah, um, I guess the best way I can talk about it is like disbelief, yeah. or I just, I don't know. It, it's after I won that set versus Wizrov, I'm just like, there's more, right? <laughs> like, like there's always more. I, I, I don't know. I've never been at a super major or summit or something like that where I play a match and I win, mm. and then there's not more. It's just weird that that was the end of it for me and then I, I just kind of won and it, it took a long time for me to accept it I, I I still haven't really accepted it it's it's just a crazy feeling because you know working towards this for so long that I finally did it yeah. uh, my my emotions were kind of just going everywhere it, it just took a long time to get to that point so it was I s still can't believe it I mean, yeah, we, we saw a lot of your tweets. Obviously, we were so happy for you. I mean, getting all kinds of love from the community. Rightfully deserved, too. Absolutely. We're just so <laughs> over the moon for you. Own it, man. This is yours. Yeah, this is your moment, baby. It's your time. <laughs> but hey, after the tournament, man, we saw the subscriptions rack up, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah it was going, Twitch chat was going crazy for you, dude. The following day, you had like 5,000 more subs. Mm, yeah. How can you describe that feeling of that like outcry support mm. from all those crazy smashers and, mm -hmm. and other folks? All right, so look, right, right after the tournament ended, um, first off, playing Melee for this long since 2006, so, you know, it's been about 13 years, being able to finally get to that point where I win a major tournament, uh, you know, I've been getting closer and closer. Not only that, but um, after winning, you know, when I walked downstairs, I saw everyone giving me a round of applause and clapping and stuff, and these were people, like, Hungry Box yeah. and Mango and top just top players yeah. and top community members are all just like looking at me and you know give me applause. It's actually crazy just like seeing them because I look up to them, yeah. you know. So then after I go to my stream and the subscriptions are just going absolutely insane. I was streaming the entire day, and then after the tournament that just happened, all of this hitting me just at once. I, I don't know. I just I couldn't process anything. So I I literally just sat on my stream and I just couldn't function after that. It you know, and I was like that for a handful of days afterwards. I'm finally okay now, but 
as the subscriptions were coming and stuff like that, I don't know. It's like I, I felt like I was in a dream or something. Like nothing was real. So yeah. that, that's kind of the best I could describe it. I yeah. mean, it's the best way to describe it because really you are like living in the moment of your dream, right? So that makes perfect sense. You had a lot of people from AZ joining you in the Summit House, including Vector Man, who helped you out with coaching. So how important was it to have AZ and a coach in at the event with you? I don't think I could have got first with without Vector Man. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, um, Charles going the into the event, yep, the coach. <laughs> for me, going into the event, I... Uh, I did a lot of practice and preparation, and I think I would have done well without him, but I don't know about getting first place without Vector Man. Having him there just really helped in preparation. You know, somebody that knows me really well can help amp me up for matches and help me warm up and stuff. Because he's like a, he's maybe like a top 50 or so caliber player. Vector Man's really good. So warming up with him helps me a lot. Somebody that just knows me really well, so. Uh, that helped. And then also Ty was there too as a buy-in. So having him there support also helped me as well. You know what, Mr. Williamson, you were the star of one of Summit's most famous sketches. Yeah. What was it like filming that impressive Pikachu along with baby Jojo? <laughs> All right, so that skit, impressive Pikachu, that was like a two minute long skit or so. Yeah. And that took longer than the whole day. We did the whole day just yeah. filming, shooting, like a whole bunch of different takes and stuff like that. Uh, it's insane how much work goes into just a two minute video. And, and it makes me think about like, like video production if you're making like a movie or something like that. It takes a really long time. Um, but you know, working with Jojo, like uh, Mango's son, he was actually really good. Like he was super cooperative. He was, uh, I don't know, he was, he was just really nice to work with. And it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed working the whole, the whole time. So it was cool just filming that with the Summit staff. For sure. Well, leading up to Summit then, when do they set this up with you? Like, how far in advance do they let you know you're doing this? And they give you, do they give you a script? Like, how far along do you have to plan for this? It was the day of. What? And pretty much, you know, you go there and they're just like, hey, all right, so here's our idea. We're doing this. And they, and I was like, okay, you know what? Let's, let's do it. Let's do this skit. And uh, what I did during the whole day was I watched the Detective Pikachu trailer over and over and over and over again, <laughs> trying to nail down the, like the tone of voice and, and the emotion that the the main actor for Detective Pikachu had. So it was it was a long day and it was really fun at the same time. That's amazing. Day of, we're doing this. Let's go. He the Ryan the Reynolds ever. energy, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. The level up. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I love acting and I love doing that sort of thing. So I was, I was totally up for it. It was, it was fun to me. Well, it's fun to us watching, that's for sure. Um, on your stream, you do Mango Axe Wednesdays and random best of fives with Pew Pew U. Are these fun game modes just for streams entertainment or have they actually have helped you improve as well? They're mainly for entertainment, but I do think it helps me at the same time. Like just playing against somebody who's really good, who's different every single week because you know playing against PPU and Mango every week mm -hmm. it's like okay I'm playing against a really good player although it's net play you know net play is a bit different from playing on console and CRT uh, it's not going to be as fluid or try hard or whatever but mm -hmm. uh, you know it's, it's still good it's still good to get that taste of playing against a top player every week uh, so it does it does help me some at the very least but most of my practice comes down to Training by myself, uh, you know, practicing a whole lot of tech skill and training with a vector man, you know, playing locally. Uh, that's where most of my practice comes from. But that, that taste of playing against Mango and PPU, that, that definitely helps me at least a little bit for sure. Now on the subject of training, mm. at Summit, you actually lost a Mango in an Iron Man set. And man, he did not hide that stuff, man. He popped <laughs> off on you, dude. How yeah. difficult was it to lose to this dude, especially when you're trapped in the room with him? You know, Mango told me before we played, he said, look, Axe, don't lose to me because I already have my pop off ready. Oh, no. And I, I was sitting there like, oh, no, this, <laughs> this can't be good. And that's the problem. Like, he was already beating me before the set even happened. Yeah, I was already, yeah, like, yeah. nervous going into it. Like, if I lose, oh, no, he's, he has something <laughs> planned, right? So that's, like, in the back of my mind. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I was a big fan of his pop-off, even though, you know, it was at your demise. But Axe, next time, why don't you just get up and start dancing with him? 
<laughs> to the tango, baby. Yeah. That's a celebration dance. I mean, if you lose, <laughs> it's not easy to get up and start dancing. I'm just saying. But you could Absolutely. you could take away his joy a little bit by ruining his pop off by just like busting out your own moves, you know? I, I, I would like I would have tugged him to the tummy, man. I've been salty about <laughs> loss like that. Damn. <laughs> You know, I accepted it for that moment, but next time, next time it's going down. Yeah, for sure. please. I mean, we just want to see your moves, Zach. That's all. <laughs> We've seen you act. Now we want to see you dance. Ah, you want to see the Drake side of me. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Absolutely, right. baby. We want to see that hotline bling. <laughs> Axe, unfortunately, we're out of time, but we want to thank you so much for joining us, and congrats again on that Smash Summit victory. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now that we're all caught up on Summit, let's switch our focus to Tiger Uppercut 2019. And surprise, Ni did not win. Let's hit the highlights to find out who took him down. Oh, we've got a man jaunting, looking for the running two. Oh, no, five low. Five low. Another one. Oh, that was an ass take that came from John Ding. And you can look at it. On his face. He was so relieved from that match. Just take his lows, trying to seal down next step while standing one. See in the corner because it's going to be really difficult for Eddie to slide the corner style and just like and that. There we go. Set point Arsenal Nash. Mid range swings to John Ding, right? Arsenal Nash so good with this spacing. Allowing for the whip punish every time. And you know this girl going to bleed you at the wall. Oh, low parry John Ding. Get the, get the low parry. Is this going to be it? Right back in. Oh, but crowd the high and Arsenal Nash able to take the game from John Ding. And again, up until this point, right, the whole game's just been about ranks you going to the hunting stance, test with low. Oh my god! Punch parry at the end. Still slowly fighting back. Oh, doesn't get it though. Like the World Tour champion right now. He's got back range. to the cage. Oh my and that's god, gonna that do it. Be so Nice see, punching his ticket to be able to advance. The thing is now, he has to advance. Arsenal Ash cannot afford to just continue to back up like that because it put him back the wall. Oh Never mind, God. gets the crush, and there you go. Arsenal Ash with one game. Winner's finals, he draws first blood. Oh, those little exchanges. Side oh, there you go, slide one more time. Both on now in rage. Yeah, huge lively for Arsenal Ash. Arsenal Ash. One yeah, will they put the Shabook in? Please don't. Please oh sit there. Down for one. Arsenal Ash in grand finals. Looking for a black man for Olsan. Oh, Magic again. four. Doesn't work once. Try again. Oh, oh my God! Oh, wow, just, just out of range. Oh my God! Try. All goes mid. Yeah. Oh, gets clipped. Trying to rotate around, maintain that wall positioning. But hit. That's a wow. bad position. Oh my Super God! Super Kuga sweep. Oh my. Up two games to one. Wow. Oh, goes for another hill. Oh, one. doesn't get it though. Out of range again. It's not gonna become a factor here. Arson oh Ash rebound. Two to two. Oh my god. Oh, oh my three. god. That's that should be it. Arson Ash. Is that it? That's oh my. That's it. Tiger uppercut 2019, and from Pakistan, Arson Ash over knee in grand finals. Arslan Ash attended his very first Tekken World Tour event and walked out as the winner. To help us chat about Arslan Ash's victory, let's welcome to the show Tekken commentator Spag. How's it going? How's it going, guys? Good to be here. How you guys doing, man? Uh, excellent. We love Amazing, it. Man. When you show your face in the show, so we're very happy right now. Look, <laughs> look you know, we got to get down to it. Yeah. Let's talk about Arslan Ash, man, the MVP of this damn weekend. He had <laughs> one half a weekend. He's only 19, too. Crazy. And he took out some real killers at Tiger Uppercut. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this guy, because I feel like he might be the next big thing in the FGC. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just going to say off the bat, I mean, at this point, it's very hard to argue that he's not the best player in the world right now. Wow. Um, and... You know, just just looking at the people he's beaten, man, and he's he's done it consistently now. You know, um, he first did it at uh, Evo. No, he he did it at, uh, in Dubai first. People thought it was uh, uh, it was luck, and then he did it again in Evo Japan. Mm -hmm. Crazy loser bracket run, beat a, a bunch of champions, uh, and then. Um, of course, he just did it again. Um, and, 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 you know, if you looked at the top eight bracket, it could have been second World Tour Finals. Most of those people in the bracket were mm -hmm. finalists last year, and he just breezed through it in winners. Crazy. Uh, I want to talk about his set against me. You could see the nerves, obviously, from Arsenal Nash after he, after he each match. So how did he keep his composure despite the lack of TWT experience? 
Well, the thing is, he may, he may have a lack of TWT experience, but in terms of his tournament experience, it, he's got a lot of it. Mm. Uh, he's been playing since he was a kid. Um, you know, my, from my friend Asim, who's one of the top players in the UK, um, you know, he's actually originally from the, the area where Arslan was from. And, you know, he came from the UK to, um, from, sorry, from Pakistan to the UK and beat the hell out of everyone in Europe. And, you know, so, you know, he knows that scene very well. He knows Arslan. He says he's been playing since Tekken 5, you know, even before that as a, as a little kid. You know, he used to come to the arcade a little child you know and playing Tekken and you know so yes he may have you know inexperience in Tekken World Tour but the amount of tournaments they play in Pakistan the amount of Tekken they play there you know this guy is definitely in form and he, you know I guess very experienced in um, those high pressure situations yeah, What's crazy is that he didn't just show up with one character, man. He he was crazy with both Geese and Kazumi. Mm -hmm. Why does this combination of characters work for him? Because I see it a lot. Yeah, I mean, it, what's crazy is that in Pakistan, the two main games are Tekken and KOF. Mm -hmm. um, KOF, of course, where, you know, Geese is well, Fatal Fury KOF is where Geese is, is originally from, right? Uh, so this guy, and many people don't actually know, the tournament where he beat me in Dubai, there was a KOF tournament at the same time, and he won that tournament too. So this guy not only plays Tekken at a high level, he plays KOF as well. So now imagine you put a KOF character in Tekken, of course he's going to use him, right? And, and Geese is a really strong character anyway. Everyone's picking Geese, man. I hate it. Uh, but, you know, Geese is a strong character, so of course in his hands it's going to be good. Everyone's picking geese. I hate it. Um, Everyone, man. It's so boring. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, now that you show that he can compete with the best, so do you think we'll actually start seeing him travel a bit more and compete more in the TWT? I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, man, because the, the reason why we're not seeing these Pakistanis travel in the first place, and they've been trying to travel, by the way, mm. since Tekken Tag 2, since, since years ago. The reason they can't is because of visa issues. You know, Pakistan has the uh, one of the worst passports in the world. It's actually bottom five uh, in, in the world. Uh, so for them to travel anywhere is very difficult. You know, they need to, uh, to get the visa, and just getting that on its own is, is their first hurdle. Like I said, man, you know, the Pakistanis may be good at every matchup in Tekken, but their worst matchup is that visa matchup. Man, uh, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough for them. But, uh, yeah. you know, that was one of the biggest hurdles to get uh, Arslan over to Evo Japan. And, you know, we, we had to work very hard to get um, to get him uh, over to Japan. Actually, he got mm. declined the first time. He didn't get to go to, uh, you know, he thought he wasn't going to go to Japan. Luckily, you know, he, they applied again. He got the invitation letter and they managed to clutch it in just in time. But, you know, visas are a big issue. So if he can get the, the visa application sorted and accepted, I'm sure we're going to be seeing him at a lot more places. I'm, I know he's planning to go to Evo mm. and a couple other uh, American events. That makes me so sad because you start thinking about all the other players, all the other potential, some things that could have come from any of these countries. Yeah. and they don't even have the opportunity to so they don't even try because I mean, they say why bother Pakistan is a huge hotbed for hidden talent right yeah. so it's kind of it's kind of sad I remember trying to get Arson here for Electric Clash mm -hmm. and he got denied here too for his visa and wow. it, it, it just sucked dude like yeah but hey yeah aside from uh, mm -hmm. Arson Slash we got to yeah. talk about the GOAT knee yeah. he yeah. got off to a yeah. slow start but he's back in form after finishing first at combo breaker mm -hmm. and now he's finishing second to obviously Arson Slash is, is knee back I mean, I don't think he ever left, man. I think he's 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 really good. He's one of the best. Like you said, the GOAT, you know, it's hard to argue that he's not one of the best, if not the best of all time. Um, you know, right now, he's really uh, interested in Pakistan, in the scene, trying to uh, to figure it out and, and learn their style of Tekken because it's something new, right? It's something different. He said himself on, on a stream that the Pakistani style of Tekken is different from Japan, America, Europe. It's something he hasn't seen before. So, you know, he's trying hard to do that. But in terms of... If, if you leave Pakistan out of the picture, you know, he's still beating everyone. You know, that combo breaker run was crazy. I mean, the, the amount of clutch he was able to pull out. And it's only, you can only do that if you're as experienced as he is in tournaments. So, uh, I don't think he ever left. I think he's still there. He's still going to be qualified for the World Tour Finals, I'm sure, uh, this year. And a very big contender for winning it all. Um, okay, so me got knocked out by out of winners by All San, but in losers final he flipped it. He flipped it and got the better of him. So what did me adjust that allowed him to advance? Um, so I think I think um, I mean, Nee's always had like a problem with Kazumi, the character. Mm. Uh, when he's played Kokoma, when he's played uh, Ulsan, uh, and Ulsan's not. This is not the first time Ulsan's beaten me. Ulsan's beaten me many many times as well in Korea, from what I've heard. So he's had issues with the. I think the character. You know, I'm not mm. sure if it's if it's the player or the character, but it seems to be the character. Arslan, of course, also uses Kazumi. I think that 
you know, now that he's played a lot more versus Arsenal, um, had, he went to Japan recently uh, to Osaka and had like multiple first attempts with Arsenal. So I think he's managed to get a bit more of a feel on on the character. Um, so yeah, maybe where he lost in the first set, he was just able to to clutch it out, maybe remember a few things, you know, uh, and, and 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 win. But you know, it would for someone so as strong as him, it's always going to be like a back and forth. You know, uh, Ulsan is also very very good as well. Uh, that kid is a definite contender for winning the whole thing too. So you got to watch out for him. Uh, but yeah, at that level, man, it could go either way. And I think Ni just had the, he just you know he had the clutch factor. Look, this event took place in Thailand, a.k.a. shouts to my Southeast Asian boys. And we saw yeah. some local players make some noise, baby! What do you think of those <laughs> Thailand places at Tiger Uppercut? Hey, man, you know, it's amazing. Uh, Thailand, from what from what we know, uh, mainstream, is that Book is, that, is, their, is their best player. We, you know, of course, you've got Top 8 again. He's the guy that everyone kind of looks at when you look at Thailand. But now, this time, you had that guy, Shin Akuma, who mm. lit, like, he was one hit away from putting Arsalan in losers, you know? Uh, it went to final final round and they had other players as well that were very strong we got to see some guys from the uh, from the Philippines that I haven't seen before mm -hmm. Maru who uh, a very very strong player I think that that, that scene is still uh, um, unexplored it's sort of it's, there's still killers there that we don't know about and that's the exciting thing about Tekken there's people from Thailand Indonesia Malaysia Philippines and you know they could be just that one player you know one of them almost put Arslan in losers and mm -hmm. there could be many people like that in that scene so um, you know, I'm, I'm excited, you know, Tekken's doing great. We're still learning about more players and, and you know, it's an exciting time to be a Tekken fan. Well, outside of the countries you just mentioned and the players there and the top three, who were some of the other guys that impressed you at this event? At this event, um, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty standard top eight if you think mm -hmm. about it, you know, like, uh, I think the number one person would be Maru. Maru was that guy from Philippines who used multiple characters. He used, um, he used uh, Kazumi at high level, used Feng, Josie. I think that guy, I want to see more of him. I really want to see more of him because uh, from what I saw when I analyzed his gameplay, it was very solid. The defense was on point. His matchup knowledge and, you know, character specific stuff, it was really good. So mm. Maru is one guy which, which really caught my attention from the Philippines. And I think that personally, just personally speaking, I think I feel like the Philippine style of Tekken is like the most entertaining style mm. of Tekken because they're so wild, but then they're so solid at the same time so i want to see more of him personally and just more of the filipino uh, filipino community yeah hey spag speaking of analyzing footage do you think arson ash has a, a huge advantage because pakistan doesn't really have much footage on their mm -hmm. scene is do you think that's why he's having so much success uh, I think there's an, that at this point now there's enough footage of Arsalan mm. specifically that you know I don't think that's a factor anymore. You know they've they've got first to ten footage now from Kuro Kuro stream. They got the Evo Japan. They got the Dubai tournament. They got this tournament now. If the you know and if you look at these players from Korea right now they've all got the their eyes on him and the Pakistan scene. Lohai, U I U Lohai, one of the best players, Evo Evo um, Vegas champion uh, currently defending champion he only went to this event because he heard the pakistanis were going mm -hmm. and there was another pakistani who went as well um, imran uh, yeah. very very strong player arslan's training partner did very well for his first tournament uh, so yeah i mean their eyes on are on them at the moment but i feel like for arslan there's enough footage out there of him that it's not a factor but there are other players in pakistan there are people i can name there's about five or six players that i could name who could who are basically on arslan's level wow. you oh. know who could well, who should you we keep an eye out then on, from that scene? Because that scene has so much hidden talent, and yeah. Tekken's a big game there, and that's mm. a population of like, what, 90 million people? Mm. Like, and that, that must mean at least like hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people are playing Tekken there. Yeah, I mean, from what, what Arslan said, someone asked him, you know, how, how popular is it? How many people actually play the game? And he said, just as many as Japan. He goes, wow. there's so many cities in Pakistan, you know, Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, yeah. Gujranwala, so many. And he goes, that everyone plays Tekken, and they're all at a high level. So he goes that we we have an, uh, as much players in uh, for Tekken than Japan does, and you know spread out of the country as well, not just localized in one area. Uh, they're really spread out. So there's there's a lot of players to look out for in Pakistan. Um, I mean, I can name a few, uh, but um, I, the, like I said, the main thing is getting these guys down to an event yes. because of their visa issues. That's the hard part. They're looking for sponsors. Again, if anyone wants to know which one's the sponsor, come hit me up, man, because I got the names. I can get you some really really strong players. Hey, I'll give you one uh, example. There's a guy. I'm not going to name him, but oh. Arslan messaged me uh, a week ago and he said, I've played me, I've played Chanel, but this guy is on a different level. That's what he said. Oh, I'm excited. I, I'm not saying, 
and he PM me. He just said it. Hey, if, you know, you'll see. You'll see. He goes to me, Spag. You'll see. This guy is on a different level from Pakistan. <laughs> Okay, way to tease us, Peg. Thanks so much. Uh, we <laughs> always love having you on. Thank you for joining us today, and keep up the good work on the Tech and World Tour. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, that's Peg. What a beautiful man with the... Oh, Drew. Absolutely. Dang. I got a copy of Swag, man. He's dripping all day, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yes, he was dripping, and now I guess you are too, but let's talk about your favorite player, the player with the most drip. I mean, I guess I know where you're going with this, but just tell me, man. Oh, come on, man. Everybody knows Arsenal's ass, baby. That dude is crazy. Geese, Kazumi, beating people from Korea, from a little-known country called Pakistan. Come on, man. That, that's the dude. That's the dude. <laughs> I agree with you, but Drew. He won the hardest Tekken tournament of the year. There were 17 million Koreans there. Yeah. I thought he was in Korea. This was Thailand, <laughs> and he beat them all. Drew, I agree with you, but listen, man, like, you really, you, <laughs> you really spit a lot during that whole rant. You, you got me, man. Oh, of course. You got me. It's okay. I appreciate it. I'm excited, I I'm excited I baby. I appreciate you. I'm happy to protect y'all from, from the smash and slash. That is true. And thank you so much. This is so much fun, as per usual, doing FGC Wednesdays with you. Big congrats to Arslan Ash for winning and taking his first second World Tour event. Big ups to Axe and Spag for hanging out with us today. Tomorrow is a big day of Rocket League as we re re recap season seven finals. Until then, go to our socials at Squad State. We'll see you tomorrow.